Okay, I understand that I might be a little late on this news, but in my defense, when I found out about this news, I literally just touched down in Italy after an exhausting 19 hour flight. At the time that I'm recording this video, I've only slept for two hours in the last 33 hours. So I apologize that I didn't get this to you guys sooner. And I know that this may be something that's a little bit more under the radar, but this is truly a significant trade that we need to discuss because I also think it's really cool how the LA Rams are are able to consistently pull things like this off. Now, before we get to the content, you know your boy puts in work for you, man. If you could take a minute to sack that like button for the YouTube algorithm, it really helps a lot in helping this channel grow. In addition to that, we're giving away a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X to a subscriber that turns on our notifications on this channel. And I still have a handful of Madden codes left that I'm giving away to my Instagram followers. Now that we get all that out of the way, break. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? This year was supposed to be a pretty exciting year for the LA Rams. They've already been known for their ferocious defense that is built upon the backs of arguably the best defender and best pass rusher in the NFL in Aaron Donald. But in addition to that, a couple of years ago, they doubled down on their defensive identity by swinging a trade for probably my favorite cornerback in the entire NFL. And if you asked me about a year ago or two years ago, I'd say the top corner cornerback in the NFL. Obviously, playing cornerback is a very difficult position and the best cornerback, in my opinion, typically changes from year to year, but that's Jalen Ramsey. But after swinging such a trade for Jalen Ramsey, the LA Rams had another problem. Offensively, they were just a shell of their former selves. The engine that would power them in the past, Todd Gurley, was no longer the player that he once was, and Jared Goff and Sean McVay just simply weren't on the same page anymore. So this past off season, despite being completely devoid of first round picks, the LA Rams found a way to trade Jared Goff and two first round picks to the Detroit Lions to bring along Matthew Stafford. And at this point, I felt like the LA Rams offense was complete. I'm not a big believer in needing to go out and draft top tier wide receiver talent or sign big name wide receivers, especially if your head coach happens to be an offensive genius by the name of Sean McVay. I I felt like the Los Angeles Rams wide receiver core was good as is. And the only question marks that I honestly felt surrounded that entire roster was one, their offensive line, and two, who was going to be able to take over the reins at the running back position. And to be honest, we saw some promise at the end of last season in rookie running back Cam Akers. Now, Cam Akers did get off to a slow start last year, but he finished the season off strong to put on 625 rushing yards per season, which was good for a four. 4.3 yard per carry average and the Rams were beginning to get him slightly involved in the passing game. Yes, it wasn't something that he was featured in predominantly, but it was something that it seemed as if he had the potential to do so. And right when he was poised for a huge breakout season in an off season that the LA Rams were also comfortable letting Malcolm Brown walk away, tragedy struck Cam Akers when he was hit with quite possibly the worst injury a running back could get hit with, a torn Achilles. So I know you guys know that I'm trying to kind of break into fantasy football content. We dropped one video. I'm planning on dropping more videos in the future. But at this point, I felt like something was sketchy to me, at least in regards to the running game of the LA Rams. No offense to Daryl Henderson, but Daryl Henderson didn't strike me as the guy in the LA Rams leading their rushing attack. It's not somebody that I was ever very confident in. And to be honest, I believe the LA Rams saw the exact same thing that that I saw because we got some breaking news today from Adam Schefter. Now, according to Adam Schefter, the LA Rams have successfully swung a trade for the New England Patriots running back, Sony Michelle. The Patriots are trading Sony Michelle to the LA Rams in exchange for two late round conditional draft picks per sources. New England gets back two picks and the LA Rams get 
needed talent and depth at running back. Now, if you're a New England Patriots fan, this trade could be a little bittersweet for you because Sony Michelle was somewhat of a Super Bowl hero in the Super Bowl where the LA Rams faced off against the New England Patriots. And if you think about it, it is a little bit of a sting to trade a former first round pick for two picks that will probably turn into fourth round picks at best. But the thing is, if you're a New England Patriots fan, you have to understand that you guys are kind of loaded at the running back position to a very uncomfortable degree to the point where it doesn't really make much sense to hold on to a player like Sony Michelle. If you bear in mind that the Patriots have James White, Brandon Bolden, JJ Taylor, in addition to emerging third year veteran Damian Harris, who led the Patriots with 691 yards last season while averaging an absurd five yards per carry. And that's before we get into the fact that the Patriots also drafted a brand new running back this year in Ramondre Stevenson, then obviously it's better to trade Michelle for a couple of late round picks, which the Patriots do have a history of hitting on as opposed to just letting Michelle just rot on the bench this season. This is a little bit more simple if you're the LA Rams. As a matter of fact, this is extremely simple. I want to give both of these teams props for this trade because if you're the LA Rams, obviously you kind of saw something in Daryl Henderson that I also saw. I don't think this was as a result of Daryl Henderson coming out with a day-to-day -day thumb injury because he could have easily still played. I think this has more to do with the fact that they needed maybe some sort of compliment to Daryl Henderson or somebody that could perform the same way that Cam Akers did. The Rams just had really bad luck with running back depth this year. In addition to Daryl Henderson's injury and Cam Akers injury, they also had Raymond Calais breaking his foot in their last preseason game against the Las Vegas Raiders. And Sony Michelle is an absolute stud. During his final three games in New England, Michelle was able to rush for 219 yards while averaging 6.1 yards per carry. He's only 26 years old and doesn't have that much mileage on him as he only has just over 600 carries under his belt. I guess the Patriots also felt like they couldn't pay Michelle because Michelle is entering the final year of his rookie contract and I don't expect him to be commanding a huge salary. So this is a player that the Rams could hold on to for now and can get them out of a tough situation in terms of running back depth for now. But in addition to that, this is a player that they should have no problem bringing back that could potentially complement Cam Akers as well. And honestly, I think it's a steal of a move for the LA Rams. And I think it was a very savvy move by Les Snead to be able to identify that the New England Patriots wouldn't be able to hold on to Sony Michelle and have an embarrassment of riches at the running back position. Now, I don't know how future NFL drafts are going to look for the LA Rams, but I don't think they're going to be losing much sleep over this trade. Acquiring a former first round pick that's extremely productive while only giving up two late round draft picks is an incredibly good value. And I give both sides an A for this. I'll probably give the Rams an A plus and give the New England Patriots an A because the Patriots made a difficult decision, but it's a decision that had to be made. So let me know your grades for this trade in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.